Hello, hello, more Dimmers here and welcome back to TSEC Season 19 Super Final. Uh, as you already know, uh, we have uh, two engines uh, compete in 100 games. Who's gonna be the best engine in this Season 19 Super uh, Tournament? Lila Chess Zero, who's gonna play as white and Stockfish, who's gonna play as black. And I choose this game from, from the black perspective for some interesting unbalanced reason. And you will see uh, why. First seven moves are prearranged, so we have d4, knight f6, and now bishop g5. Trompowski attack. We don't see it often. However, if you don't know play it as, as black, it's very safe to play some silent move like c6. Why? Because there is a very interesting trap. If white plays something like e3, then actually this bishop is, you know, uh, not protected. And after the check, it can be, of, of course, won. So very nice trap. You can try it at home, of course, if you don't know how to play against Trompowski. However, in our game we have c5, d5, uh, and I would like to just remind you that on my channel I show you one of my favorite games where Viktor Kuprejcik as black played against Vaganian and uh, we had queen b6, one of the most aggressive poison pawn variation, take that pawn or not. Actually we have I think over 300 games where black actually take that pawn and it's not you know as it's very very much poisoned and white has to show a lot of skills how to continue and this game which I, I, I just mentioned I continue with knight c3, queen b2 and then bishop d2, queen b6 uh, and white continue with e4, f4 um, and then e5 and it's very 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 sharp and uh, I really recommend that game this is the link uh, and I really recommend to see that game because white had the uh, almost you know all pieces hanging but didn't lose even a single uh, piece uh, you know at the end all of these uh, hanging pieces couldn't be taken the game is just amazing one of the the craziest game I've ever seen but in our game we have knight e4 knight now taking under control these two squares with tempo attacking the bishop so it's also very interesting variation and continuation I think uh, much stronger than which I just show you uh, before we have bishop f4 and only now queen b6 and now uh, how to how to continue uh, bishop c1 believe me or not is the main idea for white so imagine you just set up your bishop on c1 again and uh, and this is the best continuation uh, another continuation is actually knight d2 attacking the the knight so that's another queen c1 is the most logical one uh, actually you know defending b2 uh, however it still you know have some interesting lines uh, but in our game, the last move from the book was knight d2. Knight d2 attacking the knight. And now Stockfish is on its own. So how to continue? You, of course, could take the knight, uh, but Stockfish just pick up this pawn. And this is actually the main move in this, um, in this variation. We have knight e4 winning the knight, but of course temporary. Uh, and we have queen b4. And now the continuation like bishop d2 or knight d2 aren't that attractive. Uh, we have two main lines here. So one is queen d2, just, you know, giving up this um, this knight. Uh, and one is c3. This is what Lila Chess 0 choose. We have queen e4 and now e3 defending the, the bishop. And here Stockfish actually played the, the best move in the position, g5, sacrificing the pawn and misplacing the bishop a bit. A uh, human, usually in this position, because it's well-known position, uh, play bishop g3. However, after bishop g7, black have a very, very nice um, game plan. You know, bishop c3 is a threat. Uh, of course, f5, f4, winning the, the bishop also is a very serious threat. So black has a very nice, comfortable game. Uh, also, what human tried before was f3, making a space for the king, kicking the queen, so queen goes to g6, um, and the game also can continue. So the bishop can come to, to g3. However, black usually stands uh, better as well. Uh, in our game, 
we have another move. Lila chess zero just pick up the pawn, saying all of these variations are, uh, are not good, so at least I would like to have some compensation, uh, so I take that pawn. We have queen e5, now attacking the pawn and also attacking the bishop, so uh, bishop have to be defended. We have knight f3 with the attack on the queen, and now of course queen c3 with check. Knight d2 blocking the, the check, and now we have d6 very typical move opening the diagonal for for the bishop we have rook c1 and here stockfish didn't play a uh, queen a5 it looks like the most logical move queen a5 keeping a pressure on the pawn uh you know keeping the pin um on d2 so the knight cannot be moved uh, but rather queen g7 interesting that now this bishop which naturally belongs to g7 is blocked cannot be moved so stockfish you you know, it looks like some shenanigans, however, it's a very deeply, of course, calculated. The bishop is under attack, so we have f4, and uh, the knight also uh, gonna follow on f3, uh, and now we have knight d7. Uh, we have a4, and now queen g6, making a space for the bishop, so the queen want to stay actually on the, on the king side and get some control in the center as well. We have knight f3 as planned, and now how to continue actually h6 could be very interesting idea because if the bishop moves to h4 uh, then we would have bishop g7 very nice development let's say king f2 very natural then knight f6 uh, already with some uh, threat so white would probably just exchange and after queen f6 look at this position black has a very nice position one extra pawn uh, we're gonna have two connected past pawns very soon and protected uh, so black shouldn't have any problems with you know uh continuing the game also if white try something like bishop uh, d3 some intermezzo attacking the queen the queen can retreat to g8 and there is still a problem with this bishop so bishop h4 queen g2 and the game gonna be very very sharp for example rook g1 now queen a2 uh, with the attack on this pawn on this pawn um, and so on and still you know the game would be really really sharp however we have another move from uh from stockfish which is uh also very interesting and looks like very very strong but it's also very tricky, you know, how to continue. Queen e4, for now, this pawn is under attack, this pawn uh, also you're under pressure, and the knight gonna jump and double um, attack on these pawns. So already it looks like black gonna have a winning position very easy. We have king f2 defending this pawn and moving the king to the, to the relative safety. Uh, and now we have knight b6 as planned. Uh, we have a5 kicking the knight, so knight d5. And as you already see, black has protected past pawn. So a uh, very nice uh, advantage. But now we have bishop b5, we check bishop d7, exchanging. Uh, and now the king cannot uh, make a castle anymore. Uh, and here we have queen b3. So two extra pawns for black. It looks like position is very dominant, but the position is very tricky. So how to continue? For now, this pawn is under attack. If you play something like b6, let's say, okay, b6. It looks like pretty much logical, but look at this. Rook h to d1 and your king gonna be in troubles. Look at this. The knight is under attack. How you gonna continue? If you defend the knight, there is a very serious problem. Rook c4, and what you gonna do with the queen? The queen has to go somewhere. Not many squares, only two, but then we gonna have queen a4 with check. Now, king c7, and now knight d4 look at this already threatening some moves like uh, queen c6 very very interesting and you even cannot defend that because you're gonna lose the the knight for free and this is not the worst because white has even stronger move a takes on b6 uh, and if the pawn is taken then the rook is gone and if not king b6 is losing immediately rook b4 c takes on b4 queen c6 and after king a5 
we have knight b3 and this is a checkmate so as you see the position is not as good as you think okay black has two extra pawns but also the troubles with the king in the center uh, and if you think okay uh, rook b8 helps is exactly the same line uh, so it doesn't help much and if you play something like king c7 moving the king from the from the d file still uh, rook h to d1 now the knight is under attack and if you try to actually defend the knight then again rook c4 queen g6 uh, and now e4 kicking the the knight so a uh, knight f6 just exchange and then play e5 and this is a very very strong attack you have to move the queen so queen d8 uh, and after bishop d6 again knight d5 comes with the very strong attack position of the king is just hopeless and uh, white just gonna win that game so instead of that stockfish decided to uh sacrifice the knight but of course of the the cost is three pawns so uh, this is gonna be very imbalanced and very interesting game we have queen e3 queen e3 knight e3 king e3 and now b5 creating at uh, these three past pawns we have rook h to d1 now threatening to take them the pawn on c5 so we have rook c8 defending and now knight e5 with check king e8 now defending also the pawn on f7 and now knight d3 so the knight of course want to uh block the pawns because these pawns are very very dangerous we have rook g8 now uh, and now king f3 uh, we have rook b8 now supporting uh, the march of this pawn uh, and now bishop h4 uh, we have b4 as planned and now f5 very interesting move taking under control e6 square uh, and you will understand why it's so uh, it's so important for now we have h5 with the idea of bringing the bishop to the to this diagonal however we have rook e1 so if the bishop is moved then of course the the e7 pawn is under attack so we have king d7 now preparing e6 but now rook c to d1 so it's not possible because now the knight can take on c5 so we have rook b5 defending the pawn on c5 and also attacking the pawn on a5 uh, and now knight e5 with check and here black could actually go for 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 king e8 defend that pawn however stockfish decided okay you can take my pawn uh, and uh, your knight gonna be far far away and maybe i'm gonna you know uh, promote one of these pawns uh, but lila chess zero decided that this is too dangerous and just block one of the pawns so uh, the, the c pawn cannot move uh, and now we have e6 as planned f takes on e6 f takes on e6 rook takes on e6 so that was the pawn sacrifice uh, and now rook g4 attacking the knight and a very interesting move by lila chess zero boom bishop e7 and look at this position what would you do as black it looks like black okay can take the the bishop uh, and once the bishop is taken let's see that what, what's gonna happen bishop e7 rook e7 king d8 comes with the attack on the rook um, and also your knight is still under attack now how white can continue actually rook h7 is the strongest move just giving up this whole knight so after rook c4 what, what we would have is rook d6 and as you see this king is in a huge troubles already so king e8 and now rook a7 with the idea of delivering the check so black would have to stop it somehow but it's actually not possible rook h6 anyway rook g8 and now rook h to h7 we have another checkmate from this side so rook b8 but then simply rook a to e7 here we cannot go with the king because that would be the checkmate so king d8 uh, and now a6 rook a8 uh, a7 and uh, of course the rook gonna come uh, to b8 and win the game and black cannot do much if king c8 then actually rook c7 the king has to go back uh, and then rook b7 and again this is a very serious threat so king c8 rook h to d7 wins the game 
that is the checkmate in one move so just to survive black has to give up the material but of course they're gonna be uh, checkmated anyway this pawn gonna promote or um, the rook's gonna deliver the checkmate so as you see it looks like you know very very simple idea however it doesn't work because of all of this mating net so this is why we have rook c4 uh, and now bishop f8 so just exchanging the pieces uh, and now rook e5 and here we have also very interesting idea by lila chess zero rook e7 king c6 and now look at this Boom! Rook d6, exchanging the rooks and winning the pawn, okay? Uh, very, very tricky. So we have king d6 and now rook a7 with discovered check and, of course, winning back the material. So king c6, rook a5 uh, and now rook c3 with check. We have king e4, centralizing the king. So what's going on uh, on the board? Black had uh, three pawns for uh, for one piece. However, at the end we have only one pawn for one piece. So are these pawns still dangerous? Uh, that's a very good question. For now, the bishop and the rook uh, keep an eye on c5. So this rook still is, you know, babysitting the pawn. Uh, we have rook c2 now going after these pawns. Uh, and now we have h4. So of course, rook g2 cannot be played because uh, rook c5 wins the pawn. And after king b6, uh, winning even uh, more material and white should actually win that game. So this is why this rook st still have to stay there. So this is why we have b3 rook a6 with check king b5 and now rook a8 we have rook g2 because uh, c5 pawn is safe for now uh, and now king d3 we have c4 with check king d4 and now rook g4 attacking the the king and the pawn on the on the h4 so king d5 and now if you think you know b2 is 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 a move of course rook b8 wins that pawn so you cannot be you know um too fast with that and if you take the the pawn uh, too early uh, there is also you know bishop g7 controlling this diagonal this squares and this pawns not gonna advance so for example rook g4 with the attack on the on the bishop uh but then first rook b8 with check and let's say king a6 uh, king a4 would be very very risky as the king could come to the c5 and there are already some mating ideas so a black would be in the trouble so king a6 but then bishop d4 and this pawn gonna gonna collapse let's say h4 king c4 now this pawn gonna collapse and that's gonna be um, a draw so this is why we have c3 it looks like these pawns are very very dangerous however rook b8 uh, and what to do with the with the king if king goes actually to a4 the problem is there is another check and the king has to go back as this bishop controls all the all the squares around so king b5 rook b8 and so on so this is why um after rook b8 we had king a6 by by stockfish and lila chess zero wins the b3 pawn we have rook h4 we have rook c3 and in this position believe me or not uh, the engine signed a draw so very interesting very sharp game however it ended in a draw and in the game with opposite colors we also had the draw however it was more more stable without any uh, without all of these past pawns and um, ideas so i think the game was interesting even it ended you know uh, it the end maybe it was a bit disappointing but still the game i really enjoyed that game and uh, definitely i will show you some other games uh, we have couple of games with quite some imbalance uh, one i think it was with the with the queen sacrifice it was not queen sacrifice but it was queen um, for three pieces so that was also uh, quite huge imbalance and it's interesting that it's part of the theory maybe i will show that game or maybe if another interesting game appear i, I will also uh, show that um, and in the next game i will show you uh, some some games from the alti box tournament so if you like this video press like if for some reason you don't like press unlike and press subscribe smash the bell button thanks for watching and see you in the next one